hoping to see this service now full courses and why we are going to choose service now and what are these courses service now full courses is going to provide to each and every individuals who are being part of service now or who are just trying to begin their career in service now so this course is designed in such a way that it is helpful for whether you are belongs to it background whether you are not belongs to it background doesn't matter it will so everyone will be able to learn this service now courses so mostly this is for non it and it backgrounds if somebody doesn't have any kind of background even they can learn with this particular service now course so let's going forward so the agenda of this meeting is we are going to see what is service now and uh, they are in their features then we are going to see how we'll get this instances for free because what what kind of development which we, we we are going to do is on the instances which are provided by service now that is completely free so i'll also guide you through that part how to get this free instances then we'll see the career growth in service now then we'll see how service now component lies in within the service now itself and the various modules of service now and going forward we are going to see the service now development as well as the scripting part so let's start with it first of all what is service now to explain you this i will take an example of let's take an example of gmail so as we know that from the gmail application or the gmail website we can access our mails without uh, downloading that particular application let's say you have gmail is a pre installed application into your phone and even gmail is a website where you can go and check your email so that emails you can access from anywhere not from uh, your home not from india from anywhere across the world you can access your gmail account with the e emails why because that are hosted on the cloud similarly service now is also hosted on the cloud cloud here means like uh, you can say that hypothetical storage where you will find data you will find security where you will find storage devices and all are hypothetical it's just a hypothetical concept where the storages are on the cloud and you can access it from anywhere so to make it access freely available from anywhere we are using cloud based services service now is also a cloud based service where you have to just log into service now instance once you log in from your phone from your uh, laptop from your uh, pc doesn't matter you will be inside the service now similarly for your gmail once you log in from your phone or your web browser you will be inside the gmail device, uh, gmail mail configuration similarly for service now so it's just a cloud based platform where there's a dedicated workflow available which we have to learn and which we need to apply on the logics which we are going to develop so it's provide you the platform as a service it's one part of cloud so cloud basically of three parts one is your application as a service one is your platform as a service one is your uh, software as a service so this service now lies between this pass p a a s platform as a service or application platform as a service where you will have to create your own application on that particular platform and that platform will automatically host your application on the cloud and without writing a single line of code you will be able to develop your uh, desired application desired workflow and you can do entire customization on the service now instance so that's why all the organization most of the organization are moving towards service now because no code environment is there so everything is moved to service now moving forward what are the services provided by service now we'll see that so one of the basic and you can say that the most important services provided by service now is itsf so this is the base of your entire structure it's like uh, whenever you're building a house the pillars are the foundation similarly itsm is a foundation for any kind of service now services in this itsm we are going to learn incident problem change which we are going to discuss further in this ppt so this itsm belongs to a particular set of segment where you need to learn without this you won't be able to learn the other segments which you are seeing in front of the screen like hr management grc so itsm is one part of the services which is provided by service now where 
most of the organization, I guess 95% organization are using ITSM. Now on the top of ITSM, the other modules are built. If you see on my screen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven modules, you can see in front of me, all are built on this particular ITSM. And this ITSM on top of this HR management is built. HR is nothing but human resource. Uh, human resource means whenever you are being part of any organization, there is a mail from your HR or from the team, HR team or some team which is handling service now. So that is called HR management, which is mostly deal with onboarding and offboarding of resources. They will take care of all the activities, uh, all the functions, all that stuff will be taken care of by the HR. So these are the modules which is available in each of the organization, ITSM and HR management. Now comes to the third one, GRP. Uh, it's not being part of all the organization, but most of the organization which are from the banking sector, GRC and the finance operating system, they are using this module because of the security features. It's called government risk and compliance. So here it will analyze the risk involved in development and they will just, uh, what are the compliance issues? They will go and check during this particular phase of integration, uh, phase of this service now services, even this financial operation management. These two sectors, or you can say that these two modules belong to the banking sector. If your organization is not part of the banking, so they, they, they won't use this GRC and financial operating management. But basically they will use ITSM, HRSD, and the third is your integration. So integration is a place where you will connect two systems together. Like we are on service now instance, and if you want to get data from some other system, let's take an example, banking domain only. I want to get data from the banking domain. In this case, this ITSM integrations will help me to get the details from the third party. So this is called your integration. And the other part is called asset management, which is again uh, being part of all the organization mostly. Why? Because in every organization, there are assets which are need to be managed by most of the organization. It's like your to whom this laptop has been assigned, to whom this uh, data card has been assigned. All that serial number, all that stuff will be taken care by this IT asset management. And the last we have business management and there are many more. So it deal with the business point of view, what your business is doing. So basically these are most important services and the base will be your ITSM. Then on that base, other modules are being built. So these are the services which you can see is being part of service now. So moving forward. Okay, so the most important and the most um, ask topic how to get free service now instances so basically this part i'm going to show you one demo how to get this particular free instances so let me show you on my personal instance okay. first of all what you need to do is you need to come over here this particular website called developer.servicenow.com and this is a place where you will register yourself so I'll tell you, I'll guide you how to register. So you need to click on this sign up and start building. The page will appear like this. Service now, you can, uh, there are separate, separate topics also. You can uh, take a reference from here. You can sign up and start building if you don't have account or you can directly click on sign in if you have account. Even there's a video, small video, how to sign up. Everything is being covered over here. Still, what you can do is you can click on sign up and here you will fill all the details. So let's just wait thing for yeah here you will fill all the relevant details what is a password what is the email and uh, all the details once you fill the details you will be redirected to service now page which is this look like something like this let me show you so you need to go this developer.servicenow.com you need to register yourself get the email credentials done you will get a link on your uh, gmail activate that link then, then you can log in with the help of sign in option, which I have just now shown you. So now let me show you. Yeah. So after doing this, you will be seeing this particular instance, the de development instance. Now, once you are done with this development instance, uh, register with that instance, you will be able to see this instance. And this is a place which I told you in the beginning, this is a platform where 
you will start creating your app. You can see on my home screen, there's an app engine studio is available. I can click here and I can start creating my app without writing a single line of code. And these are the application if you see. So these are all we are going to discuss. So this is just the instance you will be getting. So yeah, going forward. Yeah, yeah. So log into your service now credentials. So there's one thing which you need to keep that in your head. After 11 days, let's say you are on vacation for 10 days and you have not logged into ServiceNow instance. As this ServiceNow instance is for free to us, after 10 days or after you can say that uh, I guess it's 10 days of inactivity, your instance will go to dormant state. Dormant state means you need to reclaim your instance back. You need to restore your instance. So mostly it happens once you don't log in for 10 days or 10 or more days. You need to release your instance and you need to get your instance back. Similar step you need to do. You need to just sign in and release the instance. Now, second point is, let's say you, uh, you have worked for a day and then you have taken a day off. So in that case, your instance will go to hibernate within 24 hours of work. So you just need to go and wake up your instance. So once you wake up, everything will be fine. You will be start doing the development activity. But this is only happening for your personal free instance. Whenever you are being part of any organization uh, using ServiceNow, like let's say example of um, DHL is a let's say client of ServiceNow. So whenever you are using DHL company uh, system, ServiceNow system, you will not be able to face this issue. Their instance will always up because service, they are paying some amount to ServiceNow to up that service 24 seven. So there is no issues with the real time, but as you can see, the instance is for free to us. So these issues we might face. So make sure that you use the instance then uh, in 24 hours, or you can say that within 10 days, you can use your instance and you can start working. I suggest use your instance every day uh, to practice your stuff. And then you will, you will be able to master the service. So these are the instance activity, which you need to follow. Everyone has to follow. Now there's one important topic, how to become a service now developer. So basically what is there in service now is you need to learn few of the basics, which is needed whenever you are being uh, graduated from any of the institute, you can say that you should, you should have a bachelor degree. It's not like in CSIA, IT, but it's recommended that if you have CS or IT background, then it will be easy for you if you are non CS background, as in my training, I used to teach most of the, them are from non IT background, mechanical background, some are of housemaker. So even they can get this service now degree, even service now certification, all that stuff. So basically you need to have a graduation degree, then you should know little bit basics of JavaScript. Even I don't recommend JavaScript most of the time because service now has separate scripting, which we are going to discuss soon. But if somebody knows JavaScript, that will help JavaScript or uh, ITL basics is completely not needed. Earlier it was needed, but now it's, it's like recommended, but it's not for everyone. If somebody is doing CSIT from some institute, they are going to learn JavaScript very easily. But if somebody is not from IT background, so for them, there's no need for second part. They can directly skip the second option over here, learn JavaScript. There I whenever I am going to uh, take the classes there, I am going to teach the service of scripting, which is different from JavaScript. This is the glide scripting, which we will be discussing. So that is scripting and JavaScripting looks similar in structure, but both are different. So for non IT, you can skip this section for IT. Obviously you will have some idea of scripting in JavaScript or Python. So you, sh you should know basics of scripting and then you will get a service now course. So once you get a service now course, you will be entitled for a certification that is called system certified administrator, which I will be discussing in the going slides. And that CSA exam, you need to qualify. Once you qualify it, you will get a free voucher, uh, you, uh, free certification. Even a free voucher code is now available in the market. You will get the free voucher code once you complete this course, service now course. So this is how you need to become a service now developer, get a degree, learn service of fundamentals and get a certification. That's it. Now, the most favorite part of all the candidates who are being 
taking this service now courses so what are the career growth in service now so i'll give you one story in 2004 service now came to the market where bmc remedy tool was there in the market from that time 2004 till 2022 no one is there in the market in this itl background itsm background who has uh, bypassed service now service now graph is exponential when it came to the new york stock exchange i guess in the year of 2011 it was only 24 dollars now the price of one stock is 500 and some 550 something around that so the career growth of service now is very vast you can learn if you learn service now you can earn a lot in service now your career growth will be like exponential graph from you can see the exponential exponent graph it keep on increasing day by day because of the no code environment you don't have to code anything most of the time you will be using the functions provided by service now that's it in rare cases and based on the client requirement we will modify the code that's different issue, different requirement but 80 70% of the time we are going to use out of the box even client need out of the box they don't want customization that that's what i am telling you service now expected to continue to grow even in the future so even in the upcoming future uh, you can say that the next 10 years 20 years maybe some other tool might come after 20 years we don't know but currently nobody is there in service now league so service now is there bmc has gone still many companies are following bmc and they are migrating from bmc remedy tool to service now tool now uh, there are places where you will find a lot of tools like sap sap system these are the tools which are separate from service now that deal only with the cloud structure service now deal with cloud as well as infrastructure as well as application structure so you don't have to worry on that if you are career in service now you you have a bright future so it's very popular in the market currently and it's very easy and very customizable to use you can customize your own way not like other tools like aws or sap here you will just have to use the tool and you are able to get all all that stuff in the career what you want so this is the growth of service now we can see where you can uh, get placed whenever you have uh, enough knowledge in service now these are the sectors the Gover government sector computer it is the i guess leading industry 60 70% you will be getting in this particular industry then insurance healthcare it so you must feel like computer and it both are same you will get most of the details in it and the cs now insurance and healthcare they are going to deal with the different modules which i have shown you like business analyst part service now business analyst you are going to deal with the insurance part similarly service now uh, technical architect so there you can go for governments and and the healthcare so lot of modules are being available in service now where you can expertise your knowledge and you can use like grc they can here you can use the governance hrsd uh, healthcare you can use it by onboarding and offboarding of your uh, patients and then we have uh, itom discovery service mapping insurance company you can uh, insurance type of company you can fit in where you will map all the insurance to the individual client so how you will doing it with the help of service now so there are a lot of sectors many more which are growing currently in service now so this is how the career fits for service now now let's talk about the service now certification and training so once you are you make up your mind that you are going to learn service now so you have to opt for one skill one course that service now fundamental course that consists of your admin and developer the course which uh, hkr is offering is itsm for the entire itsm i am talking is they are offering for admin and the developer and as well as integrations it depend on uh, you can say that uh, candidate to candidate if candidate is already having experience in service now and they only want to learn integrations we are going to discuss that only but for all the beginners this training opportunity is given by this hkr where you will learn service now fundamentals once you have learned service now fundamentals you can go and give the service now certification you will be able to get the certification uh, for free voucher code you can see here so you will once you get a voucher code from service now platform where i will be guiding you how to get it so you need to register for exam once you register for exam you can see certified application developer or certified ap application administrator this is a place where you will apply the voucher code 
So all the 300 plus dollar voucher code, sorry, let's go back, will be given to you by ServiceNow. Once you have completed the ServiceNow fundamental course on their platform, that is called nowlearning.servicenow.com, which I will be showing you. If you type here, nowlearning.servicenow.com, this is a place you will get your certification done and all that stuff. Every certification will be installed, uh, sorry, migrated over here on this particular platform called Now Learning Service Now platform. And you can see certification is there. And you will see the option called Get Certified. So you need to click here. Once you click on this certified, these are the options where you can get it. So you, the first steps is your system administrator. You need to click here. Once you click here, uh, just waiting for the page to load. You will see the option called service now fundamental on demand. So complete one of the following. These are the prerequisites to get a certification. So you need to learn this. If you click here, okay, I need to log in. So once you click here, you will be able to go and get the service now voucher from there, that instance. So this is how a certification is going to help you and you will get a free voucher code. Now learning the service now.com and then you will register for exam in service now portal. That is called webssr.servicenow.com. Now, you have two options. You complete the course, get a voucher code or get a paid training. Then else you get a instructor laid course and complete your course and receive the voucher code. There are two options. Directly go and purchase a voucher. If you know service now, if you don't know basic, we're opting for course, then go and get the instructor lead course and then you will receive a voucher code of $354, including tax. And that you will apply it over here. And then you will get uh, examination center details, all that part. And based on the scheduled date, you will get go and give the exam. So this is how this voucher code being followed. Okay. So let's go to service now overview, user interface overview. As I discussed in the beginning, service now is a cloud based platform. Okay. Where the platform looks something like this. And this platform, you will be able to do all kind of customization, all kind of stuff. You can see here on my screen, there's a Google link, Google logo over here. This Google logo is nothing but the home page logo, which I have given, or you can see that banner frame, banner logo. So these, these you have to customize based on your client details. And you can see the user interface of ServiceNow is UI 16. UI 16 means user interface 16. Whatever you are seeing right now, the left tab, right, uh, right things, left and right. So you can see this left part is application, right part is your profile and all that. That is called UI 16. If I click on this setting, if I click on switch to UI 15, so earlier in 2012 or 2013, 14, I don't remember the exact date. Between that time only the UI was different. UI looked like this. The service now logo and that uh, some instance name and it looks something like this, but now in the new releases, in the new upgrade, service now has moved forward his journey and they have introduced system UI 16, which you can see here, switch to UI 16. This is the UI, which we are, we guys have to use it whenever we are part of any service. Now, this is what it is written over here. The version of the user interface that a company's version is called UI 16. So from Istanbul version. So again, let me discuss about versions. So it's service now, every six months, service now is going to release a new version that is called patches. So it start with the English alphabet A and that it will have the city name. So like Istanbul. Now currently the city name is San Diego S before it was Rome. So P Q R S if you like English alphabet P means Paris, Q means cubic, R means Rome as for San Diego and T which is upcoming one in the month of December that is called Tokyo. And then there will be you. So you, they are going to pick some city name and they are going to release it. This is how the UI user interface and the releases are there in service now. So every six months there will be new release and every quarter there will be a result given by service now that how service now is performing Q1 to Q4. So you can see the graph will be always exponential. Since I guess 20 years now, service now is exponential growing, growing like uh, anything. So this is how the service now overview look like.
you can see this is the instance which just now i have shown you let me go back to the instance you can see this part on the top this part is called your banner you can see here this is called banner frame the real time this is a banner frame now if you see this part this where application engine engine studio and this is written this is called content frame what is called content frame banner means you are just add the banners logo and these stuffs content means if i click over here the, their content will open over here let me show you just i click on home page see the content of home page is open over over here so this this entire window is called content frame we have the content of a particular application if i select if i click on visual task code so their content will appear over here see it's loading see their content is similarly for incident their content will open over here so that's why it's called content frame this is called banner frame this is called content frame and the last one which is remaining is your navigation frame what is this navigation frame so you can see on the top it is written like filter navigator this is the place where you will filter or you can say that you can navigate to any of the application so let's say currently i am using incident if i type an incident see i am able to get i am able to search all the modules where incident is written if i click on open let's say so it will open the incident over here on the content frame so this part on the left hand side this part is called your content uh, sorry application navigator part this part is called your content frame and this part is called your header header will have logo header will have name of the instance content will have the data and the application navigator will have the list of application similarly where we have you can see here all application written over here you can see this part is called favorite part where we can make any any application as favorite so if i click over here home page then it will be applied on the favorite part you can see home page is here now this is how you will make any application as favorite you can remove the same minus sign and it will be removed so it will be come over here again home page you can see now the third is your watch history so it will have the seven days history whatever how many pages you have visited 24 hour recent history will have it's like a google chrome history or, a, or you can say that internet explorer history where you have the history of all the details which you have worked so far so this is called your history part okay let's go back now you, you understood this is called banner this is called navigator frame and this is called content frame now what are the various components of office now which we are going to discuss now let me just go back to the content and I'll show you. So these are the list of all the application and the content present in service. Now. If I click on this setting icon, you will see there are options here, theme, where we can change the theme of my instance. Currently, you can see there's dark new. If I click here, black and white, my instance will become black and white. You can see white and black. Similarly, these are the place where you can change the theme. Similarly for accessibility. This is a place where you will change the instance accessibility. Where you will choose the tooltip, show date and time format, everything you can select it and it will be applied. Similarly, for list, we have list. For form, we have form view, notification. Again, it's a customization. If I uncheck this, I will not be able to receive the notification. So these are user customization, user preferences you can see. So let me show you notification by category. Let's say if I click over here, I don't want this notification. So I will click here. I will ignore this notification. So I will not receive the notification from service now. So these are the list of customization you can say, which is present in service now for individual users. Now there's a section called developer where we will choose our options. You can see here, show application picker. You can see where there are two pickers available. These are called pickers on banner frame. This is banner frame on the top content. We have two pickers. Now, if I click here, if I uncheck this, see the picker will go. So that is that picker is very important whenever we are doing any kind of development. This picker is called application picker and this picker is called update set picker. Update set will capture all your changes, whatever you will be doing. It's like a camera. If you went to some places and if you want to capture some place uh, pictures, you are going to capture that particular picture on the update set. Similarly, we have the 
uh, similarly like camera we have global global means the application is available globally to every entire customers in service now so there are a list of application you can see if i select this only workspace customers will be able to see the application you can see this record is in global application but workspace i have selected so i won't be able to do something so only the workspace customer will be able to do it so what i can do is i can just click on global so let me show you global global and now i will be able to do the changes you can see now everything i can change it so these are the list of customization which is present in service now so going back to ppt if you see this if i click on this these are the component you can see you can change the uh, calendar you can change the buttons and all that this we are going to discuss soon on the upcoming classes now modules in service now what are the separate modules which we are going to read in service now is your itsm and that itsm modules which just now i have discussed come with this particular instance that is called your development instance this part is called filter navigator so let me just show you uh, via one uh, let me just do something like this you can see let's divide this into two half left hand side and the right hand side okay this is right this is left now this left part you will see on the top there is a logo this logo is called your instance logo instance logo means you can change this logo based on your client let's say your client is dhl put the dhl logo client is airbus put your airbus similarly this is called instance name the name which is given to you by your client so you are going to choose use this particular name over here then we have this part this is called application filter or you can say that filter navigator where you will search all the application which application the application if you click here the application which are present over here there are i guess 100 plus application present currently in itsf these are the application you can search then this is called application navigator as i told you this is called favorite bar on the application frame and this is history now coming to the right on the top we have these two picker which i have told you just now these two pickers are called application picker another is called update set picker the second most important is your look a user name and other so let me show you okay this this part is called your system administrator part this is your name because this instance is for free so you will be getting this name if your instance is not for free if you are being part of any organization this there your name will be appearing like raj like gopi whatever the name it will be available over here so this is called your profile logo let's go to the right this button is called search button this is called global search in service now global search here you can search anything single alphabet to number anything you can search any character you can search and it will search the entire service now instance and this part is called your connect chat if you want to chat with any members we are being part of your instance or part of your service now or you you your, uh, you can say that your colleagues you can chat with them with the help of this connect chat option then we have setting which just now i have shown you the setting where you will set your setting preference your setting as per your uh, requirement so this is called which i told you filter navigator application menu and the modules now these are the list of modules and there are many more which you can do in service now the base will be your itsm 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 consists of incident management problem management change management these three are consisting of itsm now we have more like release request management where somebody is again a part of itsm but not fully itsm most of the other modules also use request management basically it's used like uh, let's assume you are using amazon and you wanted to order some products from amazon you are requesting amazon uh, that this product you want and you pay some amount and that will get delivered it's nothing but we are requesting your service now instance to use it as a request so let me show you an example if i go to this maintain item and let's say i want this hard disk to be available to me the hard disk name is seagate 1 tb and i want to request something 
request should be pulled through demand demand so if i click on try it let me show you so i want this seagate hard drive i i will provide my name i'll provide my location i will order it now the product will be ordered it's not a real time case in the real time it will order but currently this instance is for free so it won't be ordered just to show you a demo so i click on order now the product will be ordered and now once the product will be ordered i will be receive a request number or the order number for the tracking purpose so this is called request management again asset and cost management are something similar to the request part but here we'll deal with only assets now we have agent workspace we have now mobile applications we are many more in service now where you will able to create your own application create your own request and you can send fulfill it via other uh, you can say that other candidates or other uh, employees or other it members who are being part of service now so these requests are fulfilled by the itsm developer which we will be studying that as an admin and development course now let discuss about itsm and the most important part of this itsm or you can say that more basic part is called incident now what is incident so let's take an example uh, your wifi is not working and you have uh, called your customer support that my wifi was not working so what he will be doing he will be raising a concern or uh, you can say he will raise a request on behalf of you and he will say that a uh, technician will come to your place and they will rectify the issue so they will give you a number that number is nothing but to call the incident number incident basically means interruption to the service so you have a interruption to your wifi at what time every details will be asked by your uh, you can say that your uh, customer care when you have faced this issue what was the issue when was the first time issue was reported so these all are called being part of this incident now once you answer this all this query they will raise a ticket on behalf of you and they will assign it to a particular group that is called the assignment group and that group member will come to your place and they will visit your place and they will just rectify the issue and they will solve the solve the problem now this is called incident means interruption the service now let me show you how incident module look like just type here on the application that we get a incident once you type incident you have this option called create new if you click here see incident page will open for you or you can say that click new it will open over here only so this is the incident record so i am your customer here you will tell me let's say i am filling some details so i am facing some issue so pick anyone's name okay elin is facing some issue now what issue is facing so he will there will be a category over there so let's say he is facing issue with the hard network so he is not able to connect to the particular device now what is the sub category let's say he don't want to he is not able to connect to the ip configuration or you can say that is it for wifi you can select wireless now there are some items associated with or the services associated with every person so who is the service provider so maybe airtel maybe other network you other telecom network providers so you can provide their service over here like we have sap enterprises service he is the one who is providing the service now what is the item so let's say mobile phone or let's say desktop laptop So now there's an issue with your phone network. Now you will fill the description, like my internet is not working. Is not working. And description will full. You will put all the entire thing. Since two days, I am facing issues regarding wireless connection. Please fix the issue. So you have log an incident. You have reported one incident with the priority as high, so impact high. Your your work is impacting priority is high, and the contact type you have given as phone. And what is the group? So your work is done. You will just uh, put all the details, and your work is done. The customer support what they will do? They will assign it to some group. 
So let's say it's from network team. So let's search, do we have network group? Yes. So it will be assigned to the network group. Now network group member will go and check your incident. They will do the workaround. They will fix the issue and they will come back to you and they will tell you that this issue has been fixed. First of all, what they will do, they will just save it. So your incident will be logged and they will provide you with this number. INC 00115 for future reference. You can use this number to uh, check your progress. Now, what they will do, they will just put this state to in progress. So your ticket is still working. We are going to work on the ticket. Now they will work and let's say they went to your place and they fix the issue. Then they will put the resolution information and the code will be solved permanently. So what will be the issue? Wire was wire need to be changed. We have changed the wire. Okay, so this is the resolution they have provided. Everything is done resolved by technician will put his name. Let's say the technician is this person. He will put the resolved date. Let's say today's date. Okay, he has the knowledge. Now everything is done. Go and just click on resolve and just save it. So now the ticket will be closed in your end. So to track the ticket, this particular person has done it and he will they, he will receive a notification like this email notification. Incident has been assigned to the network group. This person is doing this work. So once the work is done, you will get another email saying that everything is working fine. The incident has been closed and the issue has been rectified. So this is called incident. You can see a message, a mail has been triggered. If you, if I uh, click on this, show email, see incident is not working. Your incident has been resolved. The incident will automatically close in seven days. So these all will be auto closer of the incident in say seven days. So this is called your entire incident module where you will define your incident number, your caller, your network category, your state, urgency, priority, assignment group and descriptions. Once everything is done, you can even close the ticket as well. So if you close it, other things will be graded out. You will not go, you will not edit it. See, this is graded out. You will not edit it. Won't be able to edit it. This is called close of incident. And let's go back to the PPT. See, same thing. You can open a tick. An incident is a just a normal interruption to a service. How you can create a ticket? Why the incident ticket has been created? As I told you, if you are impacted by something, your internet is not working, your business is impacted, you are going to open the incident ticket. Now, this is called your entire incident module. Similarly, let's say this wireless issue is happening again and again. Like uh, today, your technician come to your place and they have uh, cleared the issue again. Tomorrow, same thing, day after tomorrow. And again, again, this is happening. Now, this is become problem to you. So whenever something, some incident become problem to you, that is called your problem. And that is taken care by the problem management. The problem management or problem module is similar to the incident table. You need to type here problem. Or what you can do is, can right click on the top here is an option called okay i have closed the ticket so let's go back type here problem let's go back okay, let's open any other ticket which is not closed so let's say this is a ticket which is not closed and what i will do is i will create a problem for this ticket so i will right click it i will do what create problem so once i click on create problem a problem table will come up in front of me, where I will fill again the relevant details. What is the problem? You can see the problem has been created and it is reported by the incident. So that's what when, when an incident is occurring again and again, repeated time, and it is causing a problem to you, that is called the problem. And it is taken care by the problem management. So how I come right click and go to the problem. So see, it's look like this. Correct. Or you can search here problem, no issues. P R O B L E M problem. Just click on create new. You will be able to see the problem. Same thing. You can see here. Same. Now, here we have different set of category. We have assess, root cause, fix the problem, resolve. So let's say it is happening again and again. And who was the one? So network group was the one. 
let me just put the network group who has done these changes okay now i'm saving it okay now there's an option called assess so network team will assess the problem and uh, yeah once we click on asset okay let, let's just put the username over there who is doing the problem specification so let's say uh, problem manager okay let's put some other group problem administrator accesses so he's assessing the problem and he will find the root cause what is the root cause behind your problem so he will come to your place and he will again rectify all the issues what was the problem and he will apply a fix let's say your bow your issue is with your router router is need to be changed so he will fix the issue so he will click on fix once he click on fix there will be a two option available where in the problem module you need to provide the note what was the cause note so you will put router was having issue router router whatever routers causing issue and what is the fixed note uh about router need to be changed router need to be changed that's it he will fix your issue the issue has been fixed now he will do what he will just fix the problem resolve it once the fix is applied your router is changed now you can complete it so this is the complete life cycle of the problem so one you once you will access the problem then you will do the root cause of the problem and then fix the problem okay so this is called the problem management same thing problem is cause of kernel mode incident yeah similarly we have change module now how this change module look like just type here change you have this option called create new you can create a new change so change means let's say i am a developer and uh, i have done some changes i have created one application and i have deployed this to the production instance now my code went wrong somewhere in this case i am going to, so i am going to revert my changes and i am going to use the change request management where i need approval and i need actually this is being part of release team so what they will do is they will have a cab, cab meeting every time so there is a cabinet associated meeting where they will check for the errors if there are any errors in case worst case they will go and contact developer here they will contact the developer and they will ask the developer to do the changes in the code and they will fix the issue and then it will be assigned to the change team so basically there are three kind of changes emergency changes as i told you anything is impacting at priority one or in the production that is called emergency change normal means this required approval one level of approval and standard means it required two level of approvals so vice versa a normal means two level of approval standard means one level normal approvals they have to just uh, pre authorize you can say that standard is pre authorized one level of approval and normal will have not pre authorized you should have a two level of approval so this is called standard change where you are going to apply it let me show you a change request contain detailed information regarding change like risk priority change type and the change category so let's if i click on emergency now see a change window will open where we have all the details pre filled category priority and all that stuff and i will do the impact analysis authorize schedule when this will be scheduled when this will be reviewed and once it is reviewed it will be closed so this is the life cycle of the change what is the planning what is your schedule what is your conflict all that stuff will be taken care by the change part, change team so this is just a module where all your change related activity will be moved to the production so this is called change module now let me just show you one last topic of today's that is called uh what i have opened i have opened incident incident so okay let's open the incident just click on all now once you see this once i click on all you will see there are 445 on the top you can see records available on this table so in service now as we know everything is present in the form of tables only and what table has 
table has column so these are columns number active category state caller configuration item priority sort description dot dot and these are called columns and these are the rows row one row two row three row four it's like an excel sheet and what is in the row data and what this data consists of a particular record data is called record now if you see i can see how many 445 going further if i click here last page i can navigate to the last page see this is the previous page this is the first page now here what i can see i can see list of all the record so this view which you are seeing is called list view what is called list view why just come to the url and just check what is written over here incident underscore list it means that we are on the incident table and we are on the list view if i open any record it will give you incident dot duo see incident dot duo this is called form view because form will only open when you open a particular record in a list so list will have a collection of all the items and form will have a separate specific set of items this view is called list view and this is called form view another way which you can see whether it is list view form view just right click configure see you have form layout and form design and just if i right click over here configure see list layout and list calculation list control so this is called list layout you can say that sorry not list layout list view and if i con configure this is called list layout so this view is called list view and this view is called form view let's go back to the ppt list See, again, same thing, display a set of record. And on the list view, what you can do is, you have few items available over here on the list view. What are these few items? One is called your filter. This is called filter. Filter means, let's say one requirement I will be giving you, out of 445 records, I want to filter only those records whose category is network. So what I will do? I will choose this field funnel icon called filter icon. I will click here. Once you click here, you will have this option called choose the column. They will ask you, okay, what is the column name? Category. So I will choose the column name as category. And what I will do is I will choose network. And once I choose it, I will run it. So now out of 455, there are only eight incidents with category called network. So this is called filtering. We have filtered it out, the remaining list of items. This list is called filter. This icon is sorry. This icon is called funnel icon is called filter. And let me zoom this page a little bit. Now you will see a small less than sign. This sign is called breadcrumb. Bread, B R E A D C R U M, breadcrumb. Now if I click here, the previous item will be removed. See? Now we don't have any, we got 445 again. Now there is one shortcut to apply filter right click show matching so again it will apply a filter with the same bread from c8 record so this is how you will use the filter now we have on the top list control if you see here list control if i click here we have filter we have just now seen we have group by i can group by let's say you want to group by category i will right click and group by so all the entire category will be grouped by eight correct and similarly what we can do we can show currently i you can see there are 100 row per page now i can show it 10 row per page so what will happen 10 record will be displayed that's it okay so let me just make it 100 now we can refresh the list by clicking here so it will be refreshed you can see it's being run now if i click here also it will be refreshed or i can do what i can right click and refresh a list so there are three ways which we can refresh the list the last option is create favorite I can create favorite for this and that fab favorite will be available over here on this favorite icon. So this is how you are going to use the list. This is called activity stream. So if I click here, whatever the recent activity I have done, it will be available over here. So what I have done, I have closed one incident. Let's see, see incident closed, which I have done. And I have put a resolution code. So this is how you will see this from this activity part. And the last is your personalized list. If I click here, you will see two buckets, left-hand side bucket and the right-hand side bucket. Left-hand side bucket is nothing but the bucket which is full of water and the empty bucket which is present on the right-hand side called selected bucket. Just assume I want to put some water to from the uh, full bucket to the empty bucket. So this is called bucket 
where I can put from left hand side to the right hand side. If I click here, if I put it over here, let's say this two, if I click on OK, this will be available column over here. You can see actual start date and end date. You can see here. Now, what I will do is I will remove it this two. So what will happen? It will be removed from the sheet column. These are columns only. Now there's no option for like active start date or a setup date. So these are, this is called list. This is what it is showing. You can sort it, you can fill, you can sort it, you can filter it, you can list integrate, whatever you can do, you can do with the help of list view. Now these are the things which they have told you, breadcrumb, title bar, groups, and these are fields which I have told you. These are called records, these are called columns in service now. Now this is called list. See, same thing. How you can search it? There's an option here. On the top, on the number part, on the active part, you can search. Let's say you want to search this, you can copy, and you can paste it. You can search it. What you can do is, let's say you wanted to change something from the list view, you can directly double click it over here. You will be able to change this person name. Let's say to Q or A. We have any person with a yes we have now you will be able to change the name even you can change the priority you can change the sort description you can see in the configuration a lot of things you can change let's say you want to change inquiry and help just do software and you can change it this is how you will do changes in service now instance with the help of list view which is just now shown over here now if i click here you have this object called short a to z means from last to first last to first zero zero now if i click here z2 means recent one to the last one so make sure that if i click here it will be short to ascending order and if i click again it will be short to descending order descending order is uh, shown by this arrow draw uh, triangle arrow now this is called search which i have told you and this is called field change which you can do it by double click it i hope everything is clear on the list view now we have form we have discussed form is nothing but if you open any page that will give you the form see which consists of two layout one is left hand side and one is right hand side this layout is called one uh, two row one row column and second row column and these are called sections in service now which is available only on the form you can see form has one layout two layout or a blend of both so we can have both sorry yeah how to open any module open and then just now incident open the record and you will be able to go inside the form view. this is called form okay filter part which we have discussed just now so filter is nothing but this funnel icon and you can apply the filter by choosing the column which i have just now shown you like category is software. Once you do this, you will run the run the filter and the filter will be applied. Now this is called the list and the form. Okay. 